Hi, welcome back to my channel. I'm Robin. Today we're going to take a look at a passage which is written by J. Hector Saint Jean de Crivert. Wow, what a complicated name. Obviously, it has a, like a French origin. It is asserted that he was a farmer, but we can simply learn from his name. He was far more than a farmer. Actually, Saint Jean de Crivert was one of the first immigrants to America, and he joined the army, and also he had his own business. However, in this book, Letters from American Farmer, the writer was writing from a farmer's perspective. In this book, he gives sketches of 18th century America. Well, without further ado, let's get down to the first paragraph. In this great American silence, the poor of Europe have by some means met together, and in consequence of various causes. A silent just means shelter, 避难所。在这个美洲的避难所 ，the poor of Europe。欧洲的穷人，他们通过某种方式 ，by some means， 聚集在一起。And in consequence of various causes, causes here means an idea or an organization that people are fighting for. 人们为之而奋斗的一个事业和一个理想叫做 cause。这在一些历史性的文章里面是非常常出现的。Cause， 我们一般以为是起因或者原因的意思，或者做一个动词的话是引起 ，lead to。但是它这里其实就是事业。或者梦想，来自欧洲的穷人，他们聚集在这个美洲的避难所，并且呢，他们已经拥有了各种各样的事业和理想。To what purpose should they ask one another what countryman they are? 他们有什么理由问别人你来自于哪一个国家呢 ？Alas, two thirds of men had no country. 三分之二的人都是没有祖国的。Can a rich who wanders about Who works and starves, whose life is a continuous scene of sore affliction or pinching penury, can that man call England or any other kingdom his country? Rich means a poor man, 一个可怜的人。一个可怜人，他四处游荡，工作却要挨饿。他的生活就是无尽的折磨 ，affliction. Affliction just means suffering, 或者是 pinching penury. Pinch means to spend more than you can spend. 入不敷出叫做 pinch. 他的生活是无尽的折磨和贫困。Penury， 你可以想象另外一个单词叫 penny。Penny 就是很小的那种分币嘛。Penury just mean poverty。他的生活是无尽的折磨，并且是贫困。你怎么可以要这样的人叫英国或者任何其他一个王国他的祖国呢 ？A country that had no bread for him, whose fields procured him no harvest, who met with nothing but the frowns of the rich. The severity of the laws, with jails and punishment, who owned not a single foot of the extensive surface of this planet. Procure, procure just means to get, to obtain. 在他们原来的国家，没有面包给他们，他们的土地也不能给到他们任何收获。除了富人的皱眉、严苛的法律和监狱和监禁，他们什么都不能获得。自己脚下的广袤的土地，一分一毫都不属于他们。这样的国家怎么可能是他们的国家呢 ？No, urged by a variety of motives, here they came. 这当然不是他们的国家，所以出于对一些动机的驱使，他们来了，来到了美国。Everything has tended to regenerate then. New laws, a new mode of living, a new social system. Regenerate just means to regrow or bring something back to life again. 使什么东西重获新生。在美国，所有的事情都似乎要他们重获新生，新的法律，新的生活方式，新的社会体系。Here they have become men. 在这里，他们成为了真正的人。In Europe, there were so many useless plants. 在欧洲，有太多无用的植物了。Wanting fresh showers, 他们渴望新鲜的雨露。They withered and were mowed down by want, hunger, and war. 他们被物资的缺乏 ，hunger。饥饿和 war 战争所摧毁。Want 这里的话是 a lack of something， 对什么什么的缺少。But now, by the power of transplantation, like all other plants, they had taken root and flourished. 但是现在，由于移植的力量 ，transplantation 就移栽移植。Like all other plants， 像所有的其他的植物一样 ，they have taken root， 它们扎了根，并且 flourished， 繁荣兴盛。So basically, the writer is using a metaphor comparing two different states when farmers are in Europe and in America. 
。这里作者通过一个暗语对比了农民在欧洲和美洲的不同的生活状态。在欧洲，他们的命运就像是杂草或韭菜，渴望着甘露，但是呢，却没有人在乎他们，随意的死掉。Basically, they were leading a very miserable life in Europe. 然而，同样的人，他们来到了美国，就有了新的生活，开在这片土地上扎根。Formerly, they were not numbered in any civil lists of their country, except in those of the poor. 之前在欧洲的时候，他们从来不会被记录到任何公民的名单当中，他们只会被归为穷人。Here, they rank as citizens. 在这里，他们却被归为公民。By what invisible powers have this surprising metamorphosis been performed? Metamorphosis means a great change. 一个巨大的变化，从昆虫那个 cocoon， 从昆虫的这个蛹，然后到达这个 butterfly。到达蝴蝶的这样过程叫做 metamorphosis， 所以它的引申义就是 a very great change。这种非常巨大的变化是通过怎样的一种 invisible powers 无形的力量所达成的呢 ？By that of the laws and that of their industry. Industry here just means hard work， 辛勤劳动，是通过法律和他们辛勤的工作所达成的。The laws, the indulgent laws, protect them as they arrive, stamping on them the symbol of adoption. Indulgent just means tolerant. 这个宽容的法律呢，从他们一到达美国就开始保护他们，并且在他们身上盖上了被接纳的痕迹。Adoption 这里就是 acceptance， 接纳、接受。They receive ample rewards for their labors. Ample just means enough. 他们的劳动得到了足够的回报。These accumulated rewards procure the lands. 这些不断累积的财富呢，使他们获得了土地。These lands confer on them the title of free man. 这些土地同时又给了他们自由人的称号。Confer on somebody something just means to give something to somebody. And to that title, any benefit is fixed, which man can possibly require. 这句话稍微有一点点复杂，因为有个小小的倒装在这边，所以把它重新倒回来的话，应该是这么去理解。To that title is fixed every benefit which man can possibly require. Be fixed with just means to to be connected with 和什么什么连接。和这样一种自由人的称号所连接的是任何的利益，一个人可以得到的任何利益。也就是说，如果你是个 free man 的话，那么你有 every possibility to get whatever you want. This is the great operation daily performed by our laws. 这就是我们法律每天所做的一个事情。From whence proceed these laws? 那么这法律是如何来的呢 ？From our government, 来自我们的政府。Whence the government? 那政府又是如何来的呢 ？It is derived from the original genius and strong desire of the man. 政府的权力来自于人民的天才和强烈的愿望。这些人民呢是 ratified, patron, confirmed, 认可 Crown 指的就是 Britain Kingdom， 英国的国王。那些人民是由英国的国王 patron 认可，把他们送到美洲殖民地的。因为那时候美洲还没有独立嘛。这篇文章写于一七六九年到一七七五年之间。So much for this passage. 这篇文章读完之后，我们中国人有一句古话，叫“橘生淮南则为橘，生于淮北则为枝”。所以又有了这样一个“南橘北枝”的典故，这样一个成语。也就是说，人生活的环境会影响到这个人的一个行为，他的一个做派，甚至他的所思所想。总的来说，这篇文章是非常的 powerful， 所有的东西都是一加一等于二的东西。大家可以去再去好好的品味一下这一篇文章里面讲的一些思想内容。很多时候，别人抱怨我们中国人素质可能不是那么好，但是你会发现在别的华人的社会当中，我们中国人素质是相当相当高的。近的说香港、台湾，远的说散布在全球的华人。所以这到底是为什么呢 ？See you next time， 拜拜。